Despite a brand new royal book by expert and author Robert Hardman being a biography of King Charles, it also has a string of bombshell claims about the Prince and Princess of Wales, as well as their rocky relationship with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. It may be a brand new biography of King Charles that goes inside his first moments as monarch and his historic coronation. But Charles III, new king, new court. The Inside Story by royal expert and historian Robert Hardman also has a series of new bombshell claims about the king and queen-in-waiting, the prince and princess of Wales. The book, which hits shelves earlier this week, before the news that Kate is in hospital following abdominal surgery, also sheds light on the Waleses. From what they did when the late queen died to how they've been dealing with the drama related to their estranged relatives, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Here we look at some of the most eye-raising revelations in the book when it comes to the couple. As the Queen's final hours neared, family members raced to Balmoral to be at her side, including William and Harry. However, two members of the royal family who did not travel to Scotland were the Princess of Wales and the Duchess of Sussex. In his memoir Spare, Harry suggests Meghan was asked to stay away in the same way Kate was. However, the reason Kate did not travel, Mr. Hardman has revealed, was the decision of Kate, not the king. The book says she deemed it necessary to stay behind and prepare her three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis, for their new school start, rather than travel up to Scotland to be with the late queen. The book quotes an insider as saying, it was by luck rather than judgment, but it made it a lot easier to tell Harry that he was coming alone. Harry had been in the UK with Meghan at the time, and alleged in his biography he texted Prince William about travel arrangements, to which his brother did not reply. Clearly Prince William did not regard this as the appropriate moment for the intensely difficult conversation he needed to have with his brother, the book adds. In another part of the book, it claims that Charles and William held detailed discussions on the day the late Queen died but decided they couldn't include Harry. After he first became king, Mr. Hardman claims one of the new monarch's first decisions was to sit down with his eldest son hours after his beloved mother had passed. He writes that in previous years, Harry would have also been involved in the talks, but with tensions so high between Harry and his father and brother, it was decided it was for the best. He sat out the conversation. The book states, That evening, the couple, Charles and Camilla, would be joined for dinner by the new Prince of Wales, who would also stay at Burke Hall. The king needed to have vital but discreet discussions with his elder son. In years gone by, such a moment would automatically have included his younger son, too. But not anymore. This was clearly not an occasion for an opening up of hearts and minds with Prince Harry, particularly if he was still taking notes for his forthcoming book. Charles III needed a clear head and no distractions. In the days after the late Queen's death, royal fans pondered if it would bring estranged William and Harry back together. And a glimmer of hope came when they conducted a walkabout together at Windsor just days after their grandmother died. They were joined by their wives, Kate and Meghan, and the group put on a united front as they spoke to Wellwisher and inspected the floral tributes. A source close to William told Mr. Hardman that he organized the outing in about two hours. And they added that even though William knew it might be awkward due to the tension between him and his brother, he thought it was appropriate after the Queen's passing. However, a member of the Wales team said, neither William and Catherine nor Harry and Meghan found it easy. The author writes in the biography that crowds were astonished to see the Sussexes and the Waleses get out of a black Land Rover together, with William at the wheel. One of his advisors tells the writer, It was very much William's idea. He had organized it in about two hours flat. He had been giving it a lot of thought, and he said, I know it's awkward, but isn't it right in the context of my grandmother's death? I know he asked a couple of other people, too. Meanwhile, the new royal book also claims the Waleses offered Harry and Meghan a small gesture of an olive branch after an emotional night at Buckingham Palace. It reportedly came in the days after the death of the late Queen, 
when all members of the royal family converged on the palace after the former monarch's coffin was taken there, before being processed to Westminster Hall the following day for the lying in state. 